Welcome back. It's time to see what's going on in the digital streets. A new video featuring actress Tandiwe Newton is trending across the internet, and it has everybody talking. In a tearful interview with the Associated Press, the British star. and their truth. The emotional video reignited a much needed conversation about the impact of Eurocentric beauty standards in the entertainment industry and in the black community. Here to unpack this is Dr. Sarah Webb. She's founder of Colorism Healing and also we're joined by celebrity fashion stylist Raven Roberts. She's founder of the organization Own Your I Am. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Dr. Webb and Raven. I'm going to jump right into it because there's so much here. Uh, first of all, from, I, want to, I'll, I want to hear from both of you. Just how did you react when you saw uh, Tendiwe Newton's apology? I'll start with you, Dr. Webb. My reaction was that it seems to be a non-apology. And so the words, listening hmm. to the actual statement itself, was, I'm sorry that Black women feel that I'm taking their roles, or black, I'm sorry that black women feel like I'm taking their men. And that often sounds like what people say when they say, I'm sorry you feel that way, right? And so it seemed to kind of sidestep um, responsibility and it sidestepped acknowledgement that actresses do have agency and that just humans have agency. And even the statement, I'm sorry, I'm the chosen one, right, makes it seem as if we're just at the mercy of people making choices on our behalf, right? But we know that um, actresses like Tammy Way Newton are do have the agency and the power to say no, to help create space and provide opportunities for others as well. And, and, and Dr. Webb, in Tandiwe's apology, she mentions taking their men, taking their work, taking their truth. What did you make of that, that specific bar? So it's interesting because that's not just something that dark-skinned Black women feel is happening, because we have documentation, we have research, and in terms of media and Hollywood, it's very evident as well, even for people who don't know the academic research behind it. And so no one has ever accused individual people, well, I won't say no one, but most dark-skinned Black women are not accusing individual light-skinned women of intentionally taking things from us, but it's rather a need to understand that even without intent, you are given more opportunities. There is more space created for women who look like you than there are for your sisters who are darker hued. And that lack of awareness, that lack, lack of acknowledgement has actually participated in the harm that we experience. So Raven, let's talk a little bit about that harm because that harm uh, as it's connected to colorism is an old problem in the entertainment industry. Uh, it is. <laughs> is there a shift? Is there real change happening? Is 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 like Tandi, Tandiwe Newton sort of reflecting the problem, or is she like evidence that things are 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 changing? I don't think that she's evidence that things are changing. Um, her apology, like Dr. Webb said, was definitely to me until there's action behind it, performative. So, mm -hmm. what are you doing then to shift? this disparity? Are you going to create roles for these darker skinned women? Are you then on your dates going to be calling out these dark skinned men or just men in general who are colorist? So for, as far as the entertainment industry is concerned, I don't think so because a lot of the uh, daughters of black parents are mixed. So we see a rise in the Zendaya the um, Amanda Luz, the, uh, a lot of the lighter skin actresses are now playing these daughters. And unfortunately, the darker skin counterparts aren't getting as much play where they're creating their own roles like an Issa or creating their own spaces like an Abbott Elementary, where we have to create these spaces where our lighter skin counterparts like Dr. Webb, they're given these opportunities and sadly, there is more of a shift of this um, ethnically ambiguous type of person, even if they do have two black parents. Uh, Raven, I got to ask you, when you saw that video, 
I, I wonder if you thought about her motivation behind it. I know you said there's a level of performativeness to it. I, you know, I saw her in tears. Um, I saw her upset. And, and so I wondered, irrespective of her motivation, because I'm not in her head, I don't know whether this was sincere or not, What's the motivation behind doing it now? Why is she motivated to speak out now? Do you have any? Did you did you wonder that? And if so, did you come to any conclusions? I'm still trying to figure it out. I I don't know either where this motivation came from. Um, it could be like she said. She mentioned her darker skinned mother and how she feels as though she's representing the whole spectrum when that's not really the case. Um, she was in tears. The only reason I said it was performative because until there's action, again, it's just words. So what are you doing to push the I needle? I see, I see. Now that you've made this apology, what are you going to do to push the needle even further to help your darker skin counterparts or the women you feel you're not being rep representative of get that representation? That's an important distinction to make. So when you say performative, it doesn't necessarily mean insincere. It could just, but but it's easy to to be upset when there's nothing at stake, right? I mean, Dr. Yes. Webb, that, that's sort of the thing for me. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm so awesome. I'm sorry the world loves me. This really feels bad. I think about the white people that feel really bad when the cab stops for them and not me in New York, but they still take the cab. So yes. what does some, Dr. Webb, what would it look like to to move beyond that space of kind of, uh, performativity and kind of public contrition, or at least sadness, um, and, and to move to something else? So I think it has to be a willingness to sacrifice, right? And I think when we talk about inequality and injustice, whether it's racism or sexism or classism or colorism, people who have the most power, people who have the most privilege have to, if they are claiming to be allies or accomplices or if they're claiming, claiming to be contrite or sorrowful, then they have to look at where they can relinquish some of that power and create space and make space, allow for space, actually step aside and say, no, I'm not going to take this role or I am going to sponsor. So not just give advice to dark skin actresses, but I might sponsor one. I might put one through acting school, right? Or if I'm producing a mm. film later on in my career, I'm making intentional choices again. So not just, oh, I just happen to be the chosen one, but I'm intentionally now choosing other people who haven't been chosen in the past. Wow, that, that's an idea. That requires some work, some sacrifice, some commitment, uh, and a little bit of pain, you know, uh, and, and that's something that we got to deal with here, and I want to keep dealing with it. And in fact, I want you two to stay here so we can learn from you all some more. Everybody hang out with us here. We're going to take a commercial break and come back and continue the conversation about the impact of colorism in the black community. Keep it right here. Welcome back. We continue our important discussion on colorism in the black community with Dr. Sarah Webb, who's founder of Colorism Healing and celebrity fashion stylist Raven Roberts, who is also founder of Own Your I Am. Uh, colorism is a recurring conversation in the black community, and some often see it as divisive. Uh, what do you say to folk who say all we're doing is dividing our community and not focusing enough on the things that keep us together, that black folk are all black regardless of the shade. And if we focus too much on pigments and skin colors, then we will be divided and unable to advance as a collective community. What do you say to people who make that argument? Dr. Webb, I'll start with you. I say that in a way they're mm -hmm. right. But the problem is that they assume talking about the problem is the problem. And I say, for anyone who thinks talking about colorism is divisive, I say, no, colorism is the division. There's already a division. There's already a rift. There's already a legacy of our connections as Black people being frayed. And addressing that problem requires actually acknowledging what that problem is, understanding the roots of that problem, and being willing to look at the, the ways we have been complicit over time. Raven, we're slowly making progress in the community in certain ways. Does a moment like this fur further advance the conversation, at least? And, and the reason I ask this is because I was reading the comments on people's posts about this. And, the, and she was getting dragged through the Twitter streets, for sure. And I was reading people's comments, and there were some 
particularly light-skinned black folk, who were saying, look, I want to be an ally to my darker-skinned sisters, but I don't know how to inter in intervene in the conversation without making it about me. Or, if, or you know, there has to be space for light-skinned people to talk about their experiences as well. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm taking up space or, or taking up wrongful space, but that I'm trying to share my own voice as well, because I'm, I'm, I'm a racialized black person, too. I just got a different set of experiences. And when I heard this conversation, I was like, I've been hearing this conversation since I was in college, you know, decades ago. So, like, I'm like, do these moments move us forward or do they keep us in the same place? These moments definitely help to have the conversation. But unless you're in conversations like this or ha going to seek out the information of how you can be an ally, it's just kind of a mute point. So you're on Twitter saying, like, I don't know what to do. Just like white people are like, I don't know what to do about racism. There is the internet. There are darker skinned people that you can talk to about this and figure out what is the best way to be an ally. Uh, Dr. Webb has an amazing platform where she really talks about how to have these conversations. We also have lives on our platform about these conversations, different ways colorism shows up. So the resources are out there. The conversations are being had on a bigger scale now because this is brought to the forefront by a popular actress. But these conversations are being had in academia, on social media, even Clubhouse even. So the fact that people are like, we don't know what to do, there is information and resources out there to tell them what to do and to help them have these conversations and help them actually be an ally to their darker skin counterparts. They just have to seek out the information versus just saying, I don't know what to do. And also recognize that light skin privilege exists. Dr. Webb, she, uh, Raven talked about platforms. Tell me what your platform is and sort of how it engages this topic. Yeah, so Colorism Healing started off as a blog, but it has since become a multi-platform um, opportunity for people to learn about colorism, for them to learn how to transform their own attitudes, their own biases about colorism, and then also ways to resist colorism, whether it be in their workplace or in their schools or in the larger society. And so my goal really is for people to understand the, the ways that healing takes place is at the individual level, the interpersonal level, the institutional and systemic level. So looking at all of those layers, and I seek to empower people with knowledge and tools and resources to do that. And it's definitely a, a place where people feel seen and heard. A lot of the feedback I get is, thank you for creating this space. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to not feel like we're being gaslit every day and just acknowledging and saying the things that I grew up feeling but never had the language for. And so that's really, I think, what my hope is for my audience to feel informed as well as affirmed. And Raven, uh, Own Your I Am, as you mentioned, is your platform. You all have created some campaigns to address colorism. Uh, could you tell us about just maybe one or two of them real quick? So the campaigns are called the I Am, I'm Not campaigns, and they are for women to declare uh, prejudices or things that people have said about them that they're not, and then declare a plethora of statements that they are. Um, we do videos and then also images that go along with each one of our campaigns. Each woman picks their I am's and our, their I'm not's so that it's more personal to them. I've had women thank me for these campaigns and thank me for the representation of women and seeing what you know, they've been through, just like Dr. Webb said, it's just the representation, being able to see people who look like them making these statements, whether positive or negative, about things that people have said about them or ways that they feel about themselves. Hmm. This is such important work, such powerful work. You know, whenever we think about Tandiwe Newton's comments, her her career, her thought, you know, her the space she's currently taking up, and I think you both have engaged it with nuance and care. But regardless of people out in the world, whatever you think about it, this is an opportunity to really unpack not just her, but the mm -hmm. bigger issue, the biggest crisis, not just the problem of Hollywood, but a question of how we in society and we in black community continue to wrestle with white supremacy and the way that white supremacy is so deeply ingrained in our psyches that 
even among black folk, we're still granting privilege and access and, 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 and power to folk who have a greater uh, proximity to whiteness. That's something we've got to wrestle with, and that's something we're going to have to unlearn probably f for as long as w there is in America. But the work that Dr. Webb and the, doc the work that Raven is doing on their platforms, in the community, with their thinking, with their writing, with their speaking, with their professional choices, all of it matters. And I want to thank you all for being here on the show. Uh, and I want everybody to encourage everybody to learn and read and study on this issue because it is of the utmost importance. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. As always, it's a pleasure to talk to brilliant people, and you two certainly are that.